exercises performed by the PLA's 73rd Group Army. It will be breathtaking and amazing. Please stay tuned. Now you can see we have four Type 05 amphibious armored vehicle. It's also the most advanced amphibious armored vehicles in China. For those who have followed the grand gathering to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the foundation of the People's Republic of China, you must have recognized that they have performed also during the military parade. So today we have also invited one of the officers on the site so that we can know more details about this maritime training. Please say hi to everyone. Good afternoon. I'm one of the officers from a company, a military company. Please uh, talk about the preparatory work of our amphibious armored vehicle. They are trying out these water conditions. The trials by the shore is an inevitable step because we would like to see with the dynamic water conditions whether we can have the waterproof still in function and we would like to check out the functionality of each of the parts of this vehicle. And for every person on board, they have their own part of the distribution of work. And you can also see that we have two holes discharging the water from these vehicles, and they are supporting the functionality of these amphibious armored vehicles because we have to get the water out of the vehicle. And we also know that if we perform on the sea, then we have to cope with any possible risk and challenges on the water, for example, different kinds of uh, situations of uncertainties. So could you please uh, share with us the preparatory work of our soldiers? Before putting our vehicle into the water, we have a long checklist. For example, we have to check the static functions and also the dynamic functions. For the static one, we have to check the external surface and also the internal path to see whether there are the cracks of the surface and whether we have the function of the waterproof materials. And also for the functionality checks, we have 11 boxes to tick, uh, for example, the windows and also the panels and also the holes for the air circulation and also for the water discharge. Just now, as you have witnessed, we have put the water um, around the vehicle. We actually sent, dispatched our vehicle towards the water so that it's a step of the trial in the dynamic environment. And usually before carrying out an maritime training exercise, we have to do the preliminary work preparation in advance, at least one day before. And the weather condition is also an important element to consider. What about the, today's weather? What's your comment of the weather today? It's quite hot, but still we don't have very strong waves. So it's a good moment for us to do this maritime training. So I feel that the temperature is really hot. It's challenging for us human beings, and that is is also a big obstacle for our soldiers. But I know that definitely they are not afraid of the temperature, and they have to stay inside a confined room, a confined space. And inside, it will be more challenging for them to perform, perform the duties because it will be really difficult for them to breathe. And later on, we're about to take one of this amphibious armored vehicle and also participate with all the other soldiers in this maritime training exercises. And today, we're about to give you more details about this rescue vehicle as also of the Type 05. So, sir, could you please say something more about this um, rescue vehicle? Yes, it's a kind of um, vehicle of a company. When our armored vehicles ram into some obstacles or difficulties, when there's a problem of functionality with our amphibious armored vehicle, then we need the help and we will solicit the help of these rescue vehicles. 
and we can also see a cream arm on the top of it. And inside the cabin, we also have the power engine. And also for the chassis and the other parts, they are similar to those uh, equipped with the armored vehicle. So they will be equipped within the same formation. Yes, exactly. Usually they will stay by the queue of our formation, and they are playing a supportive role. And now on the side, we can see that those vehicles are retreating. Why is that? Because they have already completed that trial part with the water. And the next step, they're about to be sent again into the water for the official marital, um, mar 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 maritime training exercises. So, dear viewers, we'd like to take this precious moment to have a closer look at the environment around. For example, this white building, this is a temporary house for the um, headquarters, and there will be a squad of um, guidance sitting inside, and they will do all the dispatching work and also the organization of the formation. And over there, we can also see some flags in distance. Actually, they are the symbols we left on the water. So during this maritime training exercise, they can be worked as coordinates for our pilots. And now maybe it's time for us to board on the Type 5 amphibious armored vehicle. It's the first time for me to do this, and I'm so excited. about to hand over the camera. In order to protect ourselves from any possible risk, we're about to take this safety Jack. Now we are on board with the Type 03 amphibious armored vehicle, and this is the rescue armored vehicle. As is mentioned before by our officer, we can find a lot of tools and equipment here on the top of the vehicle. For example, this is the crane arm. And over there, that is the machine for the power generation. This is our arm. And also a board, that is the anti-wave board. We also have two giant lamps. Those are the basics. So please take your seat. Now you can hear the sound of the motor, and we're about to kick off today's maritime training exercise. What is today's topic or the priority of the maritime training exercise? Today we are mainly focused for the change of the formation. We're about to use the several amphibious armored vehicles to form different shapes of the formation. Over there, you can notice some small flags and they will work as the coordinates. Usually around those positions of the coordinates, we will ask our soldiers to change the formation. Why is it important to go through this kind of exercises? Because we would like to train our officer of the platoon to see how he can manage the actions of each member of his platoon. The other amphibious armed vehicles have also been launched now into the water, 
and now we are moving together in order to form the first version of the formation. And there will be a platoon leader nearby, and he will send us orders through the radio messages. And now you can hear the sound of the motor of the engine. And immediately when you are on board, you can feel this hot temperature on board. And usually in the cabin, the temperature would be higher than 40 degrees Celsius. So that is a big challenge for our pilots and also the other members on board. And through our camera, you can see that the first Type 05 amphibious armored vehicle is into the water now. We are now on the shore and we are moving into the water. That is the transition from the land mode to the water mode. For example, now we are on the shore and later we will enter into the semi-floating mode and finally to the complete floating mode. Sometimes when there are big waves, we will be encountering really strong disturbance from the waves. Currently, as I can tell, we have rather strong waves. And the deeper we go into the sea, the bigger waves we're about to meet. So I have a question for you, officer. How you manage to make all those heavy blocks float? So that is the same philosophy with the boat, the buoyance. If we have greater buoyance versus the weight of the body itself of this vehicle, then you can make it flow. We have used the dynamics of the water when we are pushing forward into the water. We can follow the inertia and later we can feel greater floating forces and less resistance. Now they are in a horizontal line, in a very straight line. And our rescue vehicle is about to follow. Now officially we are at sea. One thing I have noticed that the head of our vehicle is slightly tilted into the water. Why is that? Because when we are in the semi-floating mode, usually the head of the vehicle is less supported by the sand on the shore, so that's why we are more tilted into the water. And now we can hear a sound signifying the transition from the semi-floating mode into the complete floating mode. You can also smell the diesel. And now we are at sea officially. And just now you have mentioned that today for this maritime training program, we're about to train the capacity of the platoon leaders to manage the transformation of the team shapes and the formation. First of all, there will be orders coming out from the side of the platoon leader, and later on, this pilot inside the cabin of the armored vehicle will try to manage their vehicle and among all those armored vehicles, they will coordinate one with another. So they have to readjust the angles.
And today, as you can see, there were several amphibious armored vehicle participating in this maritime training exercise. Why is it difficult for us to perform this task of the formation? Because today we are sending four of the Type 05 amphibious armored vehicle at the same time into the water. In the past, we only used one amphibious armored vehicle to do the training, but today it's four together, so it's much more difficult for the four to be coordinated one with another. We will check out their capacity to work together in a team and collaborate one with another. So later we will see how they will just take the orders from the commander and how they can change the formation. So just now they have successfully completed one move. That is a very quick change of their original formation. And that is a good job performed by the pilots because that one is quite challenging. Sometimes they can even suffer from some blind spots. And now, as you can see, we still are encountering some strong waves at sea. And I can barely hear myself due to the noises coming out of the engine. And officer, you must be very used to that. Yes, after days and days of exercises, I get used to it. And for a soldier, for the professional soldiers, sometimes by hearing the sound of the engine, you can tell the functionality and also the status quo of this machine. And in our daily exercises, we will do multiple types of trainings, not only for the change of the formation, but also for the others. For example, how you can hit your target in a very precise way and how you can discover the object in the shortest delay. And also we have this whole program for the training of the soldiers according to the degree of difficulty. In the very beginning, it's easier to ask, for example, how you can shoot a static object and later on you will shoot a moving object while remaining in a static position. And step three is to shoot a static object while you are moving yourselves. And finally, the both parts, the shooter and also the object, are both moving. So this is a progressive training program for our soldiers to go through. Without techniques and without technology, we can never imagine the building up of an amphibious armed force. So that's why we are highly dependent on the trainings to manage all those exercises, uh, skills, and also the techniques. Even in this hot temperature, we will still carry out hours of maritime exercises for the training. And sometimes for the grand gathering of important events, we would train for some extra hours. Only by hard working and countless hours of training could we manage all the skills and techniques and could we better cope with all kind of uncertainties and also the risks and challenges on water. Could you please say something more about the changes of the formation? The platoon leader will be the commander this time. He will give the orders to the heads of the armored vehicles. And later, the head of each armored vehicle will later distribute this order to the pilot and the other members on board. So it's like we are going through a hierarchy. The orders will travel from one higher level to the other. It's a top-down manner of distribution of order. For example, we will ask them, what is the speed of marching forward? And 
now you can see there's another round of change of formation. Now they're in a letter-shaped formation. So that means over the past quarter of time, we have already performed two rounds of formation changes. Talking about our team, we are quite proud of it. We have a history of more than 80 years. We have always followed the tradition of courage and hard works. Our predecessors have fought their lives to achieve the foundation of the People's Republic of China and the victory of all the anti-invasion wars. And today, we're about to carry on this tradition. It has only taken one year for your original team to be transformed into an amphibious armored force. Yes, exactly. We have trained only for one year, but now we have developed our fighting capacities. We're not only working as a tiger on the land, but also a dragon in the sea. We have overcome so many difficulties. Before receiving our new equipment, we have already kicked off our trainings, for example, the theoretical learnings. We believe that knowledge is always the key, so we have started with the theory, learning. We have also learned from the other pioneering forces, our peers. And later on, we moved from this fundamental basics learning to the practical trainings. And we have also trained, first of all, with the individuals and later with a group. So from individual training to teamwork, all different steps of training, finally, we have achieved our goal to develop our fighting capacities. And this year, we have celebrated the centenary of the CPC. And really, we would like to work harder to present very good result of the training to our people and our country. What about the current formation? It's a triangular formation. So from the line, we have turned into an upside down triangle and later to a letter-shaped one. And now it's the um, typical triangle. And for our vehicle, this Type 03 amphibious armored vehicle, we would always remain on the part of the queue of our fleet. As is mentioned before by our officer, usually when we run a maritime training exercise, we have the possibility to go into the uncertain scenario. So it's quite important to, for, for us to have this rescue vehicle always by our side and on duty. So if needed, then this rescue vehicle could always come up and help out the others. Again, dear viewers, we are now on the shore and more specifically at sea in the Fujian province. The PLA's 73rd Group Army is performing a maritime training exercise. We have four Type 5 amphibious armored vehicle, and now I myself am riding with an officer on the Type 03 amphibious armored vehicle, but only for the supportive use. We are more specifically on a rescue vehicle. So, officer, what is the next step? So for this round, it's almost completed. They're about to go back to the shore, and they will also run a training for the landing. Landing is also an important part of our maritime training. Now they have changed again the formation to form another straight line 
and they have left a very beautiful white trace after them. What is the longest duration of the maritime training exercise for you? Usually between two to three hours per round. For our coach and the other technicians, they will remain on the shore for half a day. For the experts of the skills, they will help to train the new pilots and new soldiers. So this high temperature is a big challenge for all of us. So they must be sweating hard inside this confined space of their cabin. So for our soldiers, they have, be, they have to be capable of driving these armed forces vehicles, and also they should have the capacity to get out of this confined environment once there is an accident inside. For some soldiers in the very beginning, they are afraid of the water. So we have to help them out, and we have also elaborated the program for them to be trained step after step. So in the beginning, we ask them to follow the armed vehicle instead of driving directly this machine. And every soldier should be capable of swimming. Now in front of us, you can see those amphibious armored vehicles getting ready to land. Just now, we have already talked about the process of moving into the water from the shore, and what about the other way around? First of all, we have to select a good position for the docking with this landing spot on the shore, and we have to make a shift between the modes. That means the transformation of the floating mode to the standing mode or the running mode on land. We have to move in advance so that before even getting to the shore, we have to get this mode for land function ready. Once we are ready with this mode of function, and once we are ready for the landing, we just shut down one of the parts for the water bound function. And we can also open the windows and also the holes for the discharge of the air and smoke. And I can feel that we are accelerating the speed of this armored vehicle. And one after another, those Type 5 amphibious, amphibious armored vehicles are landing on the shore. They are moving towards the shore, and they are about to land. Over there, we have two red flags showing us the ports for landing. So the very first one has reached this spot. It's considered as a pioneering amphibious armored vehicle. According to the program of the exercise, our rescue vehicle, the one that we are on, will be the last to land. And landing is never the end of our training, because there will be more tasks waiting for us after landing on the shore. For example, over there, there will be some exchanges of personnel and also some temporary discussions about 
the things that we have completed and also the mistakes that we have made during the just closed round of training. And after each round, we will also give a short break to our machine, to our amphibious armored vehicle. Because you know that the seawater has a lot of salt, and that is a threat to the surface of this armored vehicle. So after each round of maritime training, we will use the clear water to cleanse the whole surface of this vehicle. So we have followed the traces of the predecessors. Yes, and that is a result of our daily training. We have different tools for us to readjust the direction of these armored vehicles. One for the micro regulation of the direction and another for the big change of the direction, a major steering. And we are just 50 meters away from the shore and it's about to be our turn. Now, through our camera, you can see that those amphibious armored vehicles, they are about to land on the spot marked by two of the red flags. And sometimes you can find blue flags too. And on the sea, you can notice a lot of um, floating markers. For example, those red flags I have pointed out to all of you before. Yes, all those are used as coordinators. They will mark a distance of 30 meters to 50 meters. And as you can see at water, that is not a very big distance. So the room is quite limited for our amphibious armored vehicle to change their direction and position, and also to form a different formation of the fleet. And just now we have Notice the bump, a little bump, signifying that we are already on the shore. And inside this vehicle, the pilot must be shifting the mode of the operation from the floating one to the land one. And very soon, we're about to complete the landing. Well, dear viewers of CCTV, we have just completed one round of maritime training exercise, and I'm about to wrap up today's live streaming program. One big challenge for our training is that we are really suffering from this hot temperature today, especially for those soldiers, they are wearing their hats and even some helmets. So that is really hard work for all of them. But still today is very happy for us to have this opportunity to join you in this maritime training exercise. We know that you have worked so hard and you have sacrificed so much to protect our country. And I would say thank you to you for your hard work. And that is the end of today's program.